Okay, welcome to the Simple Sharp Hello World tutorial. So let's just jump right into it. So I'm going to jump into Visual Studio and make a new project. It has to be a Simple Sharp Pro project. I'm going to change where I save this. Oop, no. And this is a processor. Oop. Want this folder, processor. There we go. Make a new folder here. Use that folder. I'm going to copy this project name. Paste that. Great. So here's all the code that is given to us by default. So let's add in the code that actually makes stuff happen. So first thing we need to do is import the UI package. So what we'll do to do that is using simple oh. UI. We also need to add that package to our references. So we're going to add that reference here. Great. So now we're going to set. So now we can declare the touch panel itself. So we're going to declare that here. We're going to go private TSW. It's a set of 60. I'm going to call that user interface. Perfect. We'll instantiate that inside of this try catch block. So we're going to go user interface equals new TSW760. That's the device ID. And we're going to pass it this current class on the constructor. Okay. So now that we've declared the user interface as a touch panel of the TSW760 model, now we need to add a signal event handler whenever there's a change on the touch panel. So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to go user interface dot sig change plus equals new sig event handler. Perfect. Uh, we'll, de we'll define this method later. So after that line, we need to register the user interface. I don't know what that does, but we need to do that. Okay, perfect. So now we can declare this method here. So we'll declare that down here. So we'll go void user interface sig change. And I'm going to copy this. And that takes two arguments. The first argument is a basic try list. I'm not sure what that is, but we need that in here. So, basic try list, current device. Um, I'm on battery. Hopefully, we'll be fine. And sig events. So, this is just a signal event object, which is whatever changes on the touch panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to access this parameter inside this method to check what type of change occurred. And based on that um, change digital inputs and outputs, the hello world text accordingly. So what we're going to do is we're going to check what type of change occurred. So we're going to use the switch statement. We're going to switch. Let me plug in my quickly for a second. Okay. So we're going to switch. The type 
of signal. So we're going to go switch args dot sig die. Okay. Our first case is if it's a digital input output. In that case, it's going to be a bool. So our first case is esig type dot bool. Oh, you're forgetting it's tab, not enter. Okay, so if it's a bool, then we're going to break. I'm going to add code in here in a second, but I need to make the rest of the cases first. Our second case is if it is an analog. Analogs are stored as U shorts. That's the case for the break. And finally, if it's a serial, it's going to be a string. Break. Okay, so now we can add our logic inside of here. Since we're dealing with digital inputs and outputs, we only care about this case statement here. So what we're going to do is we're going to map two buttons and have those buttons change the value inside of digital 101 and then we're going to map our hello world text to 101. So basically if digital 101 is set to true the, the visibility of the text will be on and then if 101 is off then the hello world text will not show up. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> now that we've checked if it's a digital input or output based on our boolean case here First, we need to check that there is an actual change. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an if statement and chain and check if there was an actual change. If that's the case, then we can go into our logic. So first, let's check if the change occurred on digital 101. that's the case, we can set user interface dot boolean input. It's an array of booleans, index 101 dot boolean bool value equals true. So basically what we're doing is if button 101, which I'm map to digital 101, so if digital 101 was changed, I'm going to set Digital 101 to true. Likewise, I'm going to make an else statement. If digital 100 was changed, I'm going to set 101 to false. Paste this line in. So this is kind of like a toggle. Basically, we're checking what type of change occurred. If there was a change, if the change occurred on 101, we're setting index 101 to true. If it occurred on 100, it's set to false. So then I can map two buttons, one button to 101 and one button to 100. And then if I click those buttons, the text will turn on and off accordingly. So that's the only programming logic we need. So we can save and build the project. And then we need to make our project inside of VT. So build succeeded, let's deploy our code to the processor. USB, okay. Takes a second. Perfect. So now we'll upload to the processor and it's done. Oh. Not quite done yet. Uh, 
while that's going, we can start our VT project. So all we need in our VT project is two buttons in the Hello World text. So before we can make that, we'll make a new project. I'm going to go to touch panel. I'm going to make a new folder called simple, oops, Seven sixty. That's the type of touch panel that we have. Perfect. Hit create. This doesn't matter. We'll just choose any random one. Who cares? Okay. So now we can go over here. We need to first create a new page. Easy enough. Make that as large as we can. Let's shrink it down so we can see the whole thing. So now we need two buttons and the text. So we'll add the buttons first. centered here. I'm going to call this press me. And this one I'm going to call clear. Okay, so now we can add our text. Since the text doesn't fit, we're going to have to change the width. Nope. 200. There. Good enough. Okay, so now we need to map our text and buttons to digital inputs and outputs. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign the press me to 101. The clear to 100. In the hello world, we're gonna set the enable, or sorry, the visibility digital join to 101, which means if 101 is set to true, this will display itself. If it's not, it won't. So let's go back to our project in VS. So now we can see that if 101 was changed, we're gonna set it to true. In that case, the text will display itself. If 100 changed, then 101 is going to be set to false and the text won't show up. We can see how that works here. So let's save a project and compile. Perfect. We don't want to send it anywhere. Okay, so now we can open that here. Go to a simple sharp tutorial. We can open the VTZ file, make that big. And uh, enter the IP. Automatically put the loop back in there for some reason. There we go. That's it. That concludes the tutorial.